27.2% of East Dulwich voters voted to leave the EU. But what now for the 10,474 landlords and homeowners in the area? Welcome to our first video of the East Dulwich, Camberwell and Peckham Property Market Report. Reports which focus on various elements of the property market in those locations. As the dust settles on the Brexit vote, we ask what will be next for the 7,064 homeowners in East Dulwich and especially for the 4,652 who have a mortgage. As the Brexit debate raged, George Osborne suggested that in the event of Brexit, property prices would drop by 18%. The method used for calculating such a decrease was perhaps tenuous at best. The Treasury had estimated a sharp rise in UK interest rates. This, it was assumed, would in turn raise the cost of mortgages and lower demand for property, causing a drop in property prices. That remains to be seen once the dust has been allowed to settle over the next few weeks. However, with a two-year time frame to finalise our exit, we don't expect much to change in the short term. Regarding house values in East Dulwich, there is a chance that property values may stagnate or even drop a little in the coming 12 to 18 months, but we believe that Osborne's figure of 18% is somewhat pessimistic. Perhaps even chosen as rhetoric, designed to help persuade homeowners and landlords to vote to remain in the EU. It's interesting that since the last in-out EU referendum in June 1975, property values in East Dulwich have risen by 3,306.3%. That isn't a mistake, and it should be noted that property prices did drop by 18.7% nationwide between the 2007 high point and the low point of 2009. But if you compare property value today in this country compared to the peak of 2007, the period before the financial crisis of the credit crunch of 2008-9, they are still 10.14% higher. Another credit crunch? So, should we expect another credit crunch? Well, it's worth remembering that in 2012-14, to 14, the government was panicking that the housing market was a runaway train. This was only a few years after the 2007-2009 credit crunch the most severe global recession since the 1930s. Now, the same profits of doom that forecast soup kitchens in 2008-9 are predicting a Brexit meltdown. As the saying goes, bad news sells newspapers. Stock markets may rise, stock markets may fall, yet the British public continued to buy property in 2009 and 2010 and beyond. Even in those difficult times, aspiring first-time buyers and buy-to-let landlords dusted themselves down, took a deep breath and carried on buying. Because an Englishman's home is his castle and because we all need a roof over our head. If the value of the pound decreases in the long term, it's likely that UK interest rates will rise to reverse that drop. While a cheaper pound may make your pint of sangria a little more expensive on your Spanish holiday, it will make British exports cheaper, which, of course, in turn, is good for the economy. So, what about interest rates? Since 2009, interest rates have remained at a stable, if very low, 0.5%. We have become used to these levels. So what if interest rates rise? Will this spell the end of the world? Interest rates in the 1986 to 1988 property boom were, on average, 9.25%. In the 1990s, they were on average around 6.5%. And during the boom years, when UK property values were rising by 20% a year, they were around 4.5%. Those aged 50 or over may remember when interest rates were as high as 15%, but bank governance has moved on. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, knows that raising interest rates will cause deflation, the last thing the British economy needs right now. In fact, the UK Treasury has been printing money for the last few years in pursuance of a policy of quantitative easing. This causes monthly inflation to the sum of 375 billion. Some believe that a little inflation, because the pound has slipped on the money markets, 
might be a good thing. While property values might drop in the country, they will inevitably bounce back. Any drop in house prices only hurt if you decide to sell. If you have to sell, then bear that in mind, as most people move up the market when they do sell. Your property that they are buying might have dropped too. The best part is you may be better off because the pricier property you would be purchasing might have decreased in cash value when compared to the one that you're selling. 3,410 East Dulwich buy-to-let properties, housing 7,352 tenants. Buy-to-let is a long-term investment. So with Brexit, there might even be some buy-to-let bargains in the coming months. This would most likely be as a result of some people panicking, irrespective of the evidence. Even if we were to pull up the drawbridge at Dover and stop immigration today, the UK population would still rise at a rate in excess of the current property building level. In the UK, we are currently building 139,600 properties a year. And according to the eminent Barker Review of Housing Supply report, the country needs to build about 250,000 properties a year to even meet the rise in population. On top of that, the birth rate is increasing and the general UK population is now living longer. Just under a quarter of all UK households are now single person occupied. This means that demand is only going one way, up, while supply is still stifled. Demand outstripping supply results in higher prices, that is a fact. So, what will happen next? There are indeed challenges ahead. The country has spoken and we are now in uncharted territory. It is worth remembering, however, that as a country, the UK has been through two world wars, Black Monday, Black Wednesday, an oil crisis, 15% interest rates and a credit crunch. And we survived. Finally, what of the value of your property in East Dulwich? Well, there might be a short-term wobble, but in the long term, it's safe as houses. To contact Fish Need Water, call Yavid Hussain on 020 3199 1865.